front pages this morning. Reaction to Friday's mini budget. Can we stop calling it a mini budget? It, it was, was a, a massive, massive budget. budget. Uh, continues. It was a fiscal event. Yes, that rather takes the uh, drama out of it, doesn't it? Ridiculous. The mammoth budget uh, continues to dominate the front pages. The Metro has characterised the difference of opinion on taxes between Labour and the government as tax wars. The paper reports that Labour leader Keir Starmer has promised to reverse tax reductions for the highest earners. As the Tories say, there are, all, are more tax cuts on the way. The Financial Times warns that the threat of more tax cuts could cause turbulence in the financial markets. It reports that many Tory MPs privately fear what impacts these cuts will have on the value of the pound. The Mirror leads on an exclusive interview with Gary Neville, who criticises the Chancellor's tax cuts as immoral. The paper reveals that the former Manchester United star will appear at the Labour Party conference with Sir Keir Starmer later on today. And Liz Truss has told The Express that she will make the British economy the envy of the world by slashing red tape for small businesses and reforming planning laws. And we're joined from the Labour conference back uh, up there in Liverpool by the Mayor's Andrew Pearce and the Mirror's Kevin Maguire. And here in the studio is the Director General of the Institute of Economic Affairs, Mark Littlewood. Interestingly, an old friend of um, Liz Truss. From way back in the day, yes. I first met her at university nearly 30 years ago. And you have a bit of a political... Um... We both met then in the Liberal Democrat Club at Oxford University, yes. Right. So, and she's ended up as a Conservative Prime Minister and I've ended up running a free market think tank. So, been on a similar journey over the past 30 years. Although she appointed you last year to her Strategic Trade Advisory Council. That's so you've right. been advising her. In recent weeks, have you been involved in putting these plans together for this emergency budget? Because obviously they've had to move very fast. Yeah, no, we haven't been directly advising them on what, which taxes to cut, but um, Liz Truss has probably visited my think tank in the last 10 years more than any other politician in history. Right. I'd like to think that we've provided some of the intellectual groundwork for their thinking, which I think they've got broadly right. But you don't have to sign forms to say that you are going to protect market-sensitive information or any of that sort of... No, thing. no, 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 no. We can, we can think out loud as a right. think tank, yeah. What do you make, then, of the market's reaction to this massive slew of tax cuts? Yep. The markets have responded badly. I mean, the pound sinking to pretty much an all-time low. Against the dollar, yeah. Uh, we've got to unpack some of this. Uh, I mean, that's partly a reaction, I think, to our interest rates not going up as much as they might have done. The Bank of England put our interest rates up by half a percent. A lot of people were saying they should have put them up three quarters of a percent. Mm. If you really want us to get strong against the dollar, whack up interest rates. Why? Secondly, Why does that happen? Because impact? that's the rate of return you get on pounds. So if you suddenly put interest rates up very highly, that's an attraction to move out of dollars and into pounds, and the pound would go up. Although they will now go up more at the next meeting because of the scale of the increase in That's right, Ed. Borrowing. That's right. Uh, but dialling up interest rates, too, I'm not saying the Bank of England got it wrong, I'm just saying that's a factor in what the exchange rate is. The other one is that the dollar is extraordinarily strong at the moment against every currency in the world. Uh, the pound against the euro, for example, whilst weak, is within the normal bounds. So this is as much the story about a strong dollar as it is about a weak pound. But in terms of jittery markets, although I love what the government's doing on saying the tax burden has got to come down and, indeed, regulation has got to come down, that's been what's holding back the economy. What I am a little worried about, and I think they've got to set out, and, Ed, you were mentioning this earlier in the programme, is how do you balance the books? Mm. Uh, you can't fund tax cuts entirely out of borrowing. That's just a sugar rush now that you then pay back in higher taxes later. So do they have any plans for getting public sector spending under control. I think they need to flesh that out a bit. And I think the Chancellor of the Exchequer... Well, quasi public sector spending... ..is colossal. It's the highest it's ever been. But public sector pay is very low. Well, it's still higher on average than in the private sector. I mean, I'm not saying which areas of state spending they need to get under control, but government spending has enormously outstripped growth over the past seven years. So we've been growing a little bit, but public sector well, spending's been going up a lot. Because of the pandemic. The, 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 the interesting thing, though, the Chancellor said again yesterday that he's committed to getting the national debt falling. But the national debt, according to the analysts on Friday, on the basis of these plans, goes up every year for the next uh, ten years. That's why the markets are worrying, because our national debt is rising. Uh, he can't been. say 
in the autumn budget he's going to get the debt down with more growth because it's much too early to tell whether that's worked. He says he's not going to, to raise taxes. So the only way for him to get the national debt falling is to announce in the autumn bigger public spending cuts than George Osborne announced in 2010, 2011, 2012. What's that going to mean? For the I'm National Health sure Service I, for I'm Education. Not totally sure I agree the with IFS, the Institute of Fiscal Studies say they would need £36 billion a year cuts in public spending in order to get the national debt to start, even just to start yeah. to fall, and that those would be as big or bigger than the Osborne spending cut. So you are right, he's got to take big decisions to get the public finances, and the markets will want to know he's going to do that. But these are massive decisions for public spending. Oh, they are huge decisions. And I think a lot of it hinges on growth. Ed, you're quite Yeah, but right. he's not going to get more growth in the next month. You can't well, claim well, that. No, so I think that the government's likely to say, we've got to get public sector spending under control. This all hinges not on the next three months. I think too often yeah. politicians only look at the next three months. Over the next year or two, yeah. and they'll probably be thinking in those terms because of the general election, not just the economic cycle. If the trust Quateng plan gets growth up, back to, they say, 2.5% sure. being the new level, rather than the pathetic 1% yep. or so we've had since the banking crisis of 2008. That is not a silver bullet to every problem, no. but, my God, it ameliorates a lot. But, but, but if you go back to Lawson in the late 80s or Barber in the early 70s, the last two times when you had fiscal expansions on this scale, two things. One, that back then they could decide to cut interest rates and to loosen monetary policy. These days you've got an independent bank giving right. and pushing rates up. But the second thing is they decided whether their plans had worked. Whereas now you've got an independent office for budget responsibility. They're not going to say in a month's time, these tax cuts have already delivered extra growth. They'll want to see evidence over one, two, three years. So this autumn in the budget, the Chancellor's got no choice but to announce even bigger public spending cuts than 10 years ago. I'm not totally sure that. What else could he do? Well, the, I, I mean, going to put tax we'll up? see what the response of the markets are to the deregulation packages we're going to see. If you thought the mini budget was a maxi budget, I would say brace yourselves because you're going to see a flurry of announcements on the supply side of the economy deregulating enormously. We'll see how the IFS and the Office for Budget Responsibility try and cost those into their proposals. Will that be seen as delivering growth? Yeah, but they're, they're not going to say delivering growth in a month. Well, I They'll need to see evidence what, over two or three years. Well, but he's got to announce a credible fiscal package you, now. You can make predictions. If you were, for example, well, start to is... unravel our absurd planning laws, somebody told me that there's a, about 1,600 pages of rules of things you can't do before you build a house in this country. Now, I'm not saying cutting that back to just 16 pages immediately brings growth to the construction centre, but there's a lot of bottlenecks. Sure, but you think it. massive public spending cuts is the right thing to do now? No, I think we need to cap public spending about where it is. Inflation helps some of that, by the way. It's a slightly sly way that the government can operate, but although high inflation is not a good thing, it tends to have the ability to get public spending under control more than low inflation. So I'm expecting public spending to be about flatline, possibly fall marginally in real terms, okay, but, but a lot okay. of it's going to depend on but whether the supply-side we... reform packages are seen as credible. But mm. public spending is spending on the NHS. And we've already heard from Therese Coffey, she wants to make sure that there are ambulances that get to people mm -hmm. within minutes of something happening to them. We know that it's going to take a long time. You know, she wants to set a two-week deadline to see a GP. I mean, none of these things can happen unless there's more money put into the NHS. We want our education system sure. to be improved. We don't want anything to flatline. But, so you're saying that all of those services are going to have to suffer because no, you're I'm, going I'm to not cap... saying that, Susanna. You're I'm suggesting saying... the government should cap public spending. Yeah, it's a matter of trade-offs. If you want to spend more on the NHS and education, and those might well be your top priorities, you're going to need to find other areas where you can spend a bit well, less. whose top priorities well, are not looking after sick people well, no, or educating fine. our well, in children? That case, in that case, we'll have, to, we'll have to find other areas in which do you think we should get the triple lock on the state pension, for example, or is that your top priority? But Liz Truss if you want to spend more on one thing, spending. you're probably going to have to find savings on another. But Liz Truss has said she wants defence spending to go up to 3% yep. of GDP, which is a huge increase in defence spending, which she says is important for, for meeting our international commitments. They've said they want more police on they the have. streets. They want shorter waiting times in the NHS. So, defence, like health and education. Where, 
where are the cuts going to come? Um, on this scale? I, I mean, I'd like to see a major reform of public sector pensions. That's a colossal liability on the balance sheets, uh, and I think rather unfair. Those in the public sector have much more gold-plated pensions than the 80% who work in the private sector. Oh. But, Ed, you're right. Is that what you're you advising see, Liz President uh, at the minute? Well, we're, we're, working, we're working out a, a, a whole research on the, the overall liability on public mm -hmm. sector pensions. But, Ed and Susanna, you're right. You can't have more on everything. And at the moment, I think the government needs to do a bit more about the trade-off. Well, if we want a lot more on the okay. NHS, we need a bit less on something else.